May the love and peace of the Lord be with us all, as we listen to today's Gospel and Reflection. Let us now listen to the Word of God. November 13, 2023 Memorial of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, Virgin A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And he said to his disciples, It is impossible for scandals not to occur. But woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were placed around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, than to lead astray one of these little ones. Be attentive to yourselves. If your brother has sinned against you, correct him. And if he has repented, forgive him. And if he has sinned against you seven times a day, and seven times a day has turned back to you, saying, I am sorry, then forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. But the Lord said, If you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you may say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted, and be transplanted into the sea. And it would obey you. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection Are my actions and attitudes towards others, leading them closer to goodness and faith, or are they pushing them away? Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause sin will inevitably occur, but woe to the one through whom they occur. It would be better for him if a millstone were put around his neck, and he be thrown into the sea, than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Luke 17 verses 1 to 2 Having a millstone placed around your neck and thrown into the sea, is very descriptive. Jesus is using very evocative language. A millstone was a large round stone with a hole in the center. If it were placed around someone's neck and they were thrown into the sea, they would obviously sink to the bottom and die. Thus, Jesus is clearly stating that this awful fate is actually better than the fate of those who cause one of these little ones to sin. First of all, it should be clarified that no one can actually cause us to sin. Sin is our own free choice, and we, and we alone, will be held accountable for our own sin. One thing that Jesus is pointing out here is that, even though every person must take responsibility for their own actions and their own sins, we must also take responsibility for the ways that we act as tempters of others. We are all sinners. Therefore, by our sin, we will all tempt others to sin also. Sometimes, we will tempt people to sin by provoking them to anger. At other times, we will tempt others to sin by setting a poor example. And on the contrary, we also have the ability to tempt people to virtue. Or more properly speaking, to inspire and encourage them. With that said, Jesus explains that the fate of those who act as tempters of others, especially the little ones will suffer consequences graver than an untimely death. The little ones of which Jesus speaks should be understood as those who are weak in faith, overly sensitive, particularly vulnerable at that time in their life, and susceptible to outside influence. This could be a child, or it could be someone who is currently teetering on the edge of despair, confusion, anger, or any serious sin. When you encounter people like this, how do you treat them? Jesus has a deep heart of compassion for these people and wants us to have the same depth of compassion. But sometimes we fail. We may be negligent in our duty to reach out to them. Even this negligence could be a form of causing one of these little ones to sin. Of course, it is even far worse if we were to actively agitate them, harshly judge them, provoke their anger draw them into some sin of weakness and false consolation by our temptation, etc. The simple truth is that, 
Jesus loves those who are weak, vulnerable, and sinful, and he wants us to love them with his heart. When we fail to do so, Jesus will hold us accountable for their further fall from grace. Reflect today, upon the person, or persons in your life that appear especially vulnerable, sinful, confused and lost at this time. Who is it that struggles with anger, or an addiction, or some sinful lifestyle? Ponder your attitude toward them. Are you judgmental, condemning, belittling and the like? Do you tempt them to fall further into any sins of weakness they commit, in a vulnerable state, thus leading them into further sin? Or, when you encounter someone who is greatly struggling, do you turn to them with the deepest compassion and mercy, forgiving any ways that they may sin against you, and work hard only to be there for them in their need, no matter how hard it is on you? Commit yourself to a profound love of all of God's little ones, and seek to serve them with the heart of Christ, so that one day, they will eternally rejoice with you in heaven. Let us pray. My most compassionate Lord, you love the sinner, and deeply desire that they turn to you in their need. Please give me your heart of compassion, so that I will be free to love them as you love them. May I never become an instrument of temptation for them, to fall further away from you, but instead, become an instrument of your unfailing mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's Gospel and Reflection. We hope that our small effort gave you a bit of inspiration, as you journey your day with God. Please give us a like so this will reach to as many people as possible. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.